ladies and gentlemen, many of you have probably already heard about the results of the Eurostat report in one or another way. I do not want to steal Alexander's thunder, so I will not talk about the conclusions in this introductory. But what I surely can say is that both the process of preparation of the study as well as the public consultation in itself have created a momentum for development and a window of opportunity to change public sector accounting to the better. I'm pleased to give the word now to Alexander Makornidis from Eurostat, who will give us an overview over the key findings and the recommendations of the report on the suitability of IPSAS. Thank you very much. Alexander, the floor is yours. We are uh, very, very uh, pleased for this uh, uh, opportunity today to uh, speak about the work we have done concerning the uh, suitability of uh, IPSAS for the purposes of EU uh, member states. So I think that after this very nice uh, introduction uh, uh, by Thomas, I don't need to say very much about the <clears throat> context, uh, it was very nicely described, and uh, I can go directly, let's say, on to the key problem, uh, as I, we see it from uh, the Commission's and uh, Eurostat uh, perspective, and uh, we are actually in front of a uh, threefold uh, uh, problem, because, uh, first of all, the fiscal surveillance at the EU level is based on uh, accrual uh, data, and uh, Thomas mentioned this uh, already on the basis of ESA 95 for the time being. While, on the other hand, the budgetary uh, policy at national level is uh, often uh, uh, based on uh, cash data. Secondly, uh, government finance uh, statistics uh, based on accrual principle is very often a result of a transformation of uh, cash data into accrual data. And what is here striking is that even in cases of member states that have uh, uh, accruals-based public sector accounting systems, nevertheless, the uh, budget uh, cash bias data uh, provide the main uh, uh, information for the purposes of uh, GFS and the excessive deficit uh, procedure. And finally, the uh, third aspect of uh, this problem is that all these public sector account, uh, accounting standards and the uh, accounting data are non-comparable across member states, but very often within member states as well. Okay, now in a more schematic uh, uh, form, the uh, context within which we have carried out this uh, study on uh, IPSAS, this was the requirement of the so-called uh, Budgetary Frameworks uh, Directive. And the Commission was asked to uh, run a study on the suitability of uh, the international public sector accounting standards for the EU uh, member states, and in particular for the purposes of fiscal surveillance in the EU. So what we have done then on behalf of the Commission, first of all, we ran a public consultation and we have tried, let's say, to collect as much information and views we could collect by uh, stakeholders, member states, and other interested uh, parties. Then uh, we have uh, uh, launched a uh, task force with the help of uh, experts from uh, our EU uh, member states. And finally then, we have run a survey of uh, public sector accounting uh, and auditing practices in the EU member states. This is a work that was carried out by Ernst & Young on behalf of the European Commission. And then, based on these uh, three uh, sources of uh, information, we went then, in the end, on to compiling the Commission uh, report on the suitability of Ipsos that was, uh, in the end, released uh, 6 March uh, uh, of this uh, year, a bit later than initially uh, planned and uh, expected. But, uh, okay, this is how uh, it was. Now, a few words uh, on the results from the uh, public consultation uh, uh, we uh, run across the uh, EU, and uh, not only. This is a summary uh, table displaying, let's say, the um, positions of the response with uh, respect to the suitability of hypsis for uh, EU uh, purposes. 
And uh, here, uh, this is uh, very interesting to, uh, to see that uh, actually uh, the very first uh, good message is that uh, Ipsoses are in principle, let's say, seen as suitable to a very large extent for our purposes. The second interesting uh, information which is behind this uh, summary table here is that all the um, reservations with respect to the suitability of Ipsoses, they come actually from a relatively small number of uh, member uh, states which are mentioned in the footnote uh, uh, there. So this is basically uh, uh, Germany, France, uh, and to some extent then uh, Austria, the Netherlands, and Poland. Although uh, quite some of these member states, uh, they are to a very, uh, very large extent already uh, accruals based. So this is more or less uh, uh, focusing on Ipsos as such, rather than uh, the principle of uh, accruals based public sector accounting. Then uh, uh, a very uh, uh, summary uh, here information from the survey carried out by Ernst and Young on uh, our uh, behalf on public sector accounting and auditing practices in EU uh, member states. And here again, there is a rather positive uh, message because here we can see that at least at uh, uh, central local uh, uh, level and also with respect to social security funds, the majority of member states and their institutions are either already accruals based or they use some sort of accruals for financial uh, reporting. This is also, I think, uh, uh, quite encouraging. Although the state level, this is, so to speak, uh, something like federal uh, structures or member states with uh, autonomous uh, regional uh, structures, there it looks uh, a bit different and uh, uh, it suggests that more uh, needs to be done in this respect. Okay, and finally here, uh, uh, a last bit of uh, information. This is the relation of the existing accruals-based public sector accounting standards to Ipsoses. And here, again, a positive message, I think, from this uh, uh, work that uh, quite a large number of member states, uh, they um, refer to Ipsoses with respect to the public sector accounting standards, either directly or, uh, let's say, uh, uh, in, indirectly to, uh, to this. And again, uh, as I uh, said, we consider this as a positive message uh, as a result from this survey run by Ernst and Young. And uh, I guess there is a lot uh, more information that one can take out of this uh, uh, very, very helpful report. And if I may say, this is a report that uh, we use already for the purposes of our country desks. And we use also the information from this report also for the purposes of the visits we carry out to member states. So now, um, if I may summarize uh, uh, basically the uh, key conclusions uh, uh, from our report, uh, and these are uh, three uh, uh, to be brief. First of all, uh, it is, uh, in our view, there is a clear need for harmonizing uh, uh, accruals-based uh, public sector accounting uh, standards across the uh, EU. So both there is here a requirement for accruals-based accounting and for harmonizing the accruals-based public sector accounting standards across member states. The second conclusion from our work is that Ipsoses cannot be directly implemented in EU member states, at least in their current uh, status, and therefore the idea of moving from Ipsoses towards EPSOSIS, which means European Public Sector Accounting Standards. Nevertheless, I think this is the uh, common view of uh, our, our experts and the Commission uh, as well, that EPSOSIS represent an indisputable reference framework for the uh, further harmonization of uh, European-wide Public Sector Accounting Standards. Okay, a bit more detailed conclusions. What we see as the advantages of harmonizing public sector, uh, public sector accounting standards on a basis uh, uh, across the uh, EU. 
First of all, is about consistency, transparency, and comparability of public sector financial statements. It is about uh, uh, timely financial uh, reporting. It is about increasing effectiveness and efficiency of uh, public administration. Something that is also quite interesting, we think that is uh, also about increasing mobility of accounting expertise and resources across the EU. This would be, uh, so to speak, also a byproduct of the uh, proposed harmonization. And then there is also quite a, a, a financial markets aspect in uh, this because we think that this will reinforce the free movement of capital in the internal market in, uh, by means of providing, let's say, comparable information to uh, investors about the financial activities of governments. And this is an issue which is important not only for potential investors, but also for policy makers and in the very end for the European citizens as well. Okay, now uh, as regards the uh, obstacles to implementing uh, harmonized uh, accruals, uh, uh, and this is not any surprising, the first argument, let's say here, is the high cost of this uh, exercise which is linked with a potentially high administrative uh, burden, in particular for smaller uh, government uh, entities. And then it is the importance, uh, not to say for the time, being the predominance of uh, cash, uh, cash budgeting information for the purposes of financial reporting. And uh, accruals-based public sector accounting is often seen as a threat against the uh, very uh, principle of uh, cash-based uh, uh, budgeting, though our position on this is that uh, our proposal is not to abolish uh, uh, cash-based accounting, it is rather about uh, integrating, let's say, the whole accounting and financial information uh, system and putting also uh, cash-based budgeting into the right context. And finally, uh, another point that has come up quite often as uh, an important uh, obstacle is the uh, transition uh, costs with respect to IT systems, because quite a number of member states uh, think that there will be a need to develop completely new IT systems in order to uh, uh, base the public sector accounting on accruals and accrual basis. Okay, now some, uh, particular, some particular conclusions regarding the Ipsos uh, uh, as such. So we think that Ipsos, and this was said already at the introduction, is the only internationally recognized set of public sector accounting uh, standards. There is no uh, alternative to this, and this already provides quite a uniform uh, uh, accounting uh, framework uh, for our purposes. Finally, it gives a quite meaningful uh, picture of uh, uh, government's uh, financial position and uh, performance. And in the very end, the fact that Ipsos is linked to IFRS, uh, this is uh, something that facilitates also for the purposes of government finance statistics, the consolidation of uh, public sector uh, accounting, including government business enterprises, uh, uh, that is, uh, entities that anyway uh, compile accounts and uh, report on the basis of uh, uh, business uh, accounting. Right, now, uh, what is seen as obstacles to direct Ipsos uh, adoption, and we have put also a footnote there to make clear that this is the arguments that have been brought up during the preparation of the report by, the, uh, by certain member states and the uh, experts. It is the view that uh, Ipsos is uh, incomplete and uh, still in a state of uh, development. This applies particularly to issues such as uh, taxes and social uh, benefits. Then the work on the conceptual framework is uh, only due to be completed in 2014. And again, by reference to this, uh, uh, there is a mention of certain gaps in uh, coverage and that, the, uh, ex uh, that some of the existing uh, standards uh, will probably need to uh, be modified. 
Finally, uh, another interesting point here, the differences, let's say, in the definition of public sector against the uh, notion of uh, general government in the context of uh, ESA, and also the definition uh, of control is quite different uh, when comparing Ipsosis with uh, GFS standards. So then another argument is the non-availability of uh, uh, the Ipsosis in all uh, official EU languages. I think this is a point we can really uh, help, uh, and I don't think that it is a major one. Nevertheless, there is also the view that uh, Ipsosis is a, uh, uh, basically a principles-based uh, uh, approach, and uh, there are no really detailed uh, uh, implementation uh, rules. And the concern is here that uh, this may open scope to various uh, non-comparabilities because, let's say, of various interpretations and different ways of applying Ipsosis in uh, practice. Right, so then uh, it is uh, um, the government's uh, uh, structure and the uh, standards adoption uh, process that is a matter of uh, concern by certain uh, member states. As uh, rightly or wrongly, the Ipsos board is uh, uh, seen as a rather private sector organization. There is the feeling there that uh, EU public authorities are not sufficiently engaged and represented in the context of the uh, standard setting uh, process. And finally, there is also the feeling that uh, the specific uh, uh, needs and, interest and interests of public sector are not taken sufficiently into account by the Ipsos board. All right, these are all, I think, uh, uh, concerns uh, that uh, need to be uh, uh, taken very seriously and they will need to be uh, addressed in the uh, follow-up of uh, uh, this project. And therefore, uh, taking, let's say, all these uh, views into consideration and also all the work that was done uh, within the uh, task force or in the context of the survey on um, public sector accounting and auditing practices, we uh, have then um, put a suggestion uh, for a way forward that is uh, to be uh, up, uh, to, to go through uh, three stages. There is a preparatory stage, then uh, there is a second phase concerning practical arrangements uh, before entering the implementation stage, and I will explain what we mean by this. So now, as regards this uh, preparatory uh, phase, we feel there is a need uh, to develop and achieve a certain momentum on both uh, key requirements and uh, needs. This is a, the harmonization of public sector accounting standards. And of course, we need, let's say, an agreement uh, on uh, accruals-based public sector accounting standards. It is a very, very important issue here to develop the necessary co-ownership of this project because it can go with out. Then we feel that we need to gather more uh, uh, information before developing a concrete roadmap for the implementation of uh, European public sector accounting uh, standards. And therefore, we plan a high-level uh, conference. Then we plan a further public consultation on the outcomes of this uh, uh, discussion to take place in the context of the uh, conference. And then we think that we can go on, the, on to preparing more detailed proposals. So more specifically, these practical uh, arrangements foresee the adoption of a legal uh, framework. And what is meant by that is, uh, let's say, a legislative uh, proposal for uh, designing and putting in place an appropriate uh, governance structure and uh, a standards endorsement uh, process. There is, of course, a financial aspect in uh, this, and we need, let's say, to establish and secure the necessary finance, as it goes without saying that this is going to be a quite costly project, not only for member states, but for the Commission itself. Finally, we plan to, uh, let's say, draw on national experience, and there is a, a lot of excellent work that has been done in member states on this, so we don't need to reinvent the, uh, the wheel. And it is also our purpose through our proposals, let's say, to establish synergies between, but also within uh, member states and uh, across uh, sectors of general government. 
Then uh, a quite important uh, step in these practical uh, arrangements is the idea of defining a first core of uh, um, European public sector accounting standards to be established based on the existing uh, 32 uh, Ipsuses. And the very question here is uh, which Ipsuses uh, uh, can we adopt uh, uh, almost directly uh, and which Ipsuses may need to be adapted and some of them we may need to be reviewed. And I think we have uh, done some preparatory work in our staff, uh, uh, the Commission staff working uh, uh, document in that with the help of uh, uh, our member states uh, experts, we have tried uh, a, a first attempt to classify the existing uh, IPSA standards into these three uh, categories. Of course, this is something one shouldn't take at this stage uh, uh, for CAS. There is just uh, uh, an idea uh, and uh, with the very purpose of uh, informing the further debate. And then we have from the very uh, beginning committed ourselves to respect the uh, very point that we need to address, of course, the concerns and the problems of smaller government entities. Okay, this is the, really the question, adopt or adapt. Uh, if you go through our um, uh, working uh, document, you will see this uh, first attempt to classify IPSA standards into standards that can be nearly uh, directly implemented, those that may need to be uh, slightly adapted. And there are a couple of uh, uh, standards. This is mainly the uh, standard about consolidation and the standards about financial instruments, where our member states uh, think that here there is uh, uh, quite some reflection uh, needed before, let's say, some uh, common view can be established with respect to a European uh, standard on financial instruments. Okay, then the implementation uh, stage as we see it uh, for the time being. I mentioned already the uh, need for a very strong uh, European uh, governance uh, structure and a European uh, standards adoption uh, process. Taking into account, account, of course, a couple of principles, and this is accruals-based accounting, double entry uh, bookkeeping, internationally harmonized financial uh, reporting, and uh, it goes without saying we need also a minimum of consistency between these future uh, European standards and the ESA uh, principles. Finally, our proposal is for a gradual uh, implementation of uh, EPSAs uh, in EU member states. Uh, possibly this may be a, a, a project that uh, may go, let's say, over a certain num number of phases, but the ultimate goal is to have it implemented uh, in all member states and in the medium term. So a few words on the uh, next steps uh, ahead of us uh, uh, during this uh, year. I mentioned already the EPSAS conference uh, uh, that will take uh, place here in Brussels, 29th and 30th of May this uh, uh, year. And you are all very, very welcome to uh, join us uh, at this discussion at the conference. I repeat myself, but uh, uh, on the outcome of this uh, uh, conference, we plan a further public consultation on the very idea of European uh, public sector accounting standards and whatever questions uh, may arise as a result of the uh, conference. Then we plan to establish a, a commission a working uh, group with uh, member states uh, experts on the uh, uh, EPSAS uh, project. And we think that already in the course of 2013, we can start developing a more uh, concrete uh, roadmap, including the uh, detailed steps to be taken and of course the necessary legislative initiatives I mentioned a few seconds ago. So, and in the very end, I think the uh, uh, few useful uh, links here. Uh, on the first link, you may access the Commission report and the Commission staff working document. There is also a link to the uh, uh, Ernst & Young study on behalf of the Commission concerning the uh, public sector accounting and auditing practices. And final, finally, we provide access to all the responses uh, we'll received in the context of uh, our public consultation on the IPSAS project. 
So with this, I think I have reached the end of my presentation. Thank you very much indeed for your attention.